hopefully this phone has cooled down a bit. A uh, few things. This is sort of short. Um, last night I saw some photos that were put up by a guy on Twitter named Sam Chapman. Um, on a couple other channels that I looked at, they caught those photos as well, which was U.S. Senator Mitch McConnell out of Kentucky. And it showed his hands that looked like, wow, they were almost black, very dark. He had a mark up above here that was sort of dark, okay, and then his left hand, okay. So um, I know this, and I know that the American people are going to have to come to grips with this, but the vast majority of those that are in Congress are demons, reptilians, okay. Now, for those that don't know this, I'll share this with them. Reptilians use holographic overlay technology, okay. What I saw in those pictures looked like what's called a mask failure, which means that his holographic technology is not holding up any longer. And what that means is, is over time, uh, their overlays are no longer going to be able to hide their true identity as reptilian. Now, obviously, you can imagine if these are all exposed in public, when all of a sudden people begin to realize, my God, we got a bunch of reptilians here. Okay. You can imagine the panic that's going to cause, okay? Uh, I, in my, it doesn't do any good to really sort of mention this, but uh, Patty puts up, essentially shows you different pictures of the reptilian and then what they look like in human form, okay, on Project Consension. But I've, I've seen plenty of videos and just seen it directly, the masking, the holographic overlay fail on them. Their technology is just breaking down. Which means it's like the, it's like, you know what a fresh refresh rate is on a CRT screen? Okay, that puts the pixels and the colors back in form, right? Okay, so they have the ability to mask themselves holographically so that they look like they're human, but they're not. Okay, there used to be an old series on TV called uh, B, B like in Victory. It was a, a weekly TV series uh, that showed here where these big motherships came into planet had a relationship with the president. They looked like they were human, right? And then all of a sudden, one of the, one of the beings on the, uh, on the earth began to realize, I don't think these are humans or are human looking, like they're our friends. And then they came to find out that they were harvesting, okay? Uh, children, other humans for what? Food, energy to control and invade and take over humanity. What was Interesting about that, obviously, is that they've been here a long time. They were here as squatters, okay? So now you know why they uh, kidnap children, why they eat humans. If you look at an Alfa Romeo hood ornament, you'll see a reptile eating the head of a human. If you go to the city of London, for example, the financial district, Rothschild family, you'll see two figurines on top of the pillars that are the reptilian with wings, Okay, so they're everywhere. Their symbols are everywhere. Um, but I, well, I, the previous video that I talked about all the programming, and particularly when I come into civilization or I have my phone on, when they brought out the Internet and YouTube and Twitter and all of that, was designed to essentially program everything that they present to you into your unconscious memory. So every time you turn on your cell phone and you're scrolling through all the YouTubes and everything else, and about how you're directed, particularly when they say, hey, look at this, hey, look at this. See, it knows when it has an interface with you what it is you're thinking about, what is in your memory, and it wants to continue to have that relationship with you, okay? I think I mentioned it before, the Dick Cavett show. There was a Dick Cavett show with Charlton Heston, and uh, it was called The Psychiatrist, uh, The AI Psychiatrist. You need to understand, this was in the 1970s. And they talked about how you could talk to a computer and the computer could talk to you. And then that person began to realize that it didn't know the difference between what the computer knew because it knew what you knew and what it was. That's called cyborging. When you begin to realize, wow, I don't know the difference between what it is and what I am, then you become what it is. That's why they brought out DARPA. That's why they brought out the Internet. That's why they brought out the cell phones. So one of the exercises in which you can sort of disassociate yourself with to remember what your true identity is was everything that I've mentioned before about the pineal gland, the holographic geometrical spatial time, using the conscious creative imagination, 
okay? Doing the exercise to bring back whole brain, right? Experience more light within your heart. You're feeling more love. Your energy's going up. But here's an exercise I used to do with students, okay, in a class, if you will, on how to realize how much of your consciousness is actually held captive. And that is to carry around a spiral bound binder. I used to do this with myself as a simple exercise to remember who I am and who I'm not and what I choose to give energy to experience, whether I choose to experience what it is or what I am with my conscious creative memory. And I just, to get, and I just gave an example with the last video where there I am wanting to watch the video, but somebody else interrupts what I was wanting to use my consciousness to, in, to intently watch a, a, the video, all of a sudden gets interrupted by somebody saying, no, stop. And I nearly stopped, almost on cue, which means my consciousness was told to stop and listen. But my speed was fast enough to realize that's exactly how they do it. Okay? That's the, that's the programming, okay? To get you to stop, to distract you from what you're using your conscious creative memory, excuse me, conscious creative mind on, which is in no time when you're running a high vibration like love and joy at 600 megahertz, to all of a sudden put your conscious intention in what it is. Now it's wanting to sell you something. See, the carnival worker. So a good way to catch yourself and sort of unprogram yourself, get yourself a spiral binder. And begin noting throughout the course of a day of things that are trying to distract you from your conscious creative memory and things that you realize is part of the unconscious memory programming. And make a notation of that every single day. And if you do that every day for five days, which is what I had my students do, okay? And then on Monday, they can share that with everybody in the class. So you get 25 different perspectives of 25 students that then begin to realize how all of their minds were held captive by something else that is communicating it that's trying to impose its will on what it wants your consciousness to experience through them rather than what you experience through your conscious creative imagination. And then you begin to realize how lower density consciousness is keeping higher density consciousness captive to maintain what's known as bandwidth channel lower consciousness density vibration perception is vibration that's why in the higher dimensions you are free nobody's trying to hold your consciousness captive you are free to use your conscious creative mind at a high rate of speed now you are projecting holographically what it is you're experiencing in real time and sharing it with others okay that's why these are exercises to help practice which is a way to disconnect from the programming and start exercising more of the conscious creative imagination that you have. Naturally, it's easier to do in nature than it is in a city, which is why I've always suggested to do these exercises in nature and you begin to realize your energies will begin to open up. You'll feel more chi. You will feel more light and you will be able to experience more of the conscious creative mind because you'll realize that in nature and when you're doing these exercises, you're no longer held captive. Wow, I'm free to be who I am. And you begin to realize how to dissolve all those things that you were holding on to in lower density consciousness that were all part of the programming. Okay? So I felt it was important to follow that up because there are ways to disassociate yourself from that capture. Okay? Now, obviously... You know, there's always qualifiers and givens, okay? But, you know, for instance, you meet somebody and you decide to share in a conversation, okay? This is where, you know, you can say you're choosing to give your energy, your state of consciousness. You're willing to give their energy and their consciousness the time of day because what it is they're sharing with you is going to represent energy that is based on the vibration, the perception that they are that they're sharing with you when you have a basically a transfer of communication. Remember, we're both antennas, we're both transmitters. When we run into somebody, are they transmitting love and joy? Can you see a smile on their face? And if that energy feels good and you're not feeling so bad, then your energy should go up. When we're in vibrational perception matches with each other because we're all running high frequency energy, then you can imagine what we all experiencing when we're all in harmony with each other because the waves are in harmony with each other and the energy that we're using to communicate with each other. See? 
which means we all shift to a higher density consciousness where nobody's holding anybody captive. That's the point. That's the point of the exercise, is to help realize and know the difference between the two and how that works and how we're held captive to the lower density consciousness that's trying to hold us captive and being able to discern the difference between a consciousness that's trying to hold us captive and a consciousness that is in a state that is in a higher vibrational consciousness because you can experience that energy. The energy feels good to be around. That's the essence of their spirit, their soul. Anyway, have a beautiful day. Boy, is she right over my head or not? I love you too, baby. Anyway, that's important. That will help you. Those are exercises I've done myself. That's why I used to do a lot of writing. Out of my heart, out of my soul, out of my spirit, writing to girls' hearts. But who I'm really writing through is not only another girl's heart, but I'm using my heart to communicate all my love through the girl on the planet, okay? Through other girls' hearts that they can experience how much light and how much love that is. And when that's happening, we're all raising our energy together and we're experiencing how much love we all have with each other. And when we're doing that, we're all free to be with each other where no one's in a state of fear. Now everybody's free to express who they are. And that's easy enough to do, isn't it? It just takes a little bit of practice, a little bit of patience, and we can all do this together. And that's why I'm putting this up, because of its importance. The value that it has with everyone here. Okay? We can do this. I know that. I believe that in my heart. Have a beautiful day. I love you all.